Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and I already announced it during my last playthrough that my next game would be Australia. Apparently you're looking at the German version of the game. For the most part the game is kind of language independent. There are these personality cards out there which I, you have to live with the German versions of those and we also have to look at those revelation cards which also come with some German text on this. Nevertheless on the Geek I was able to find the English version of the player board here and I think it's kind of altered because I believe the normal player boards don't have the odds here in respect to how efficient your um, army units are. I like that a lot actually. So yeah that's basically the English stuff you will see but again as usual I will do my best to translate everything on the fly and again typically especially those personality cards you choose them you play them I will let you know what they do and then in most cases or in a lot of cases those are ones per game kind of effects and then we are dealing with this. Um, I think this is the only persistent one here, Su Xiang. Um, your airships can basically take three damage before they are getting destructed or destroyed. So I will get to that. As I already announced um, in my recent playthrough of Battlestar Galactica, my patrons have kind of voted this game to me. So there was really huge interest seeing me playing this game solo, of course. So it comes with a very, very slick solo mode, which the game per se is already, I would say, semi cooperative anyway. So there is always chance that the great old ones will win the game even when you're playing a multiplayer competitive version of the game and I really like that idea so in this case to make it to the solo mode there weren't too many tweaks they have to do because again you have to beat those fellas anyway and the goal of the game is simply to score more points than the great old ones would do and believe it or not even in our multiplayer games we at least twice or so we pretty much lost against the great walls not by far it was relatively close but that's where this game shines in respect to its semi cooperative you cannot simply play for yourself if there are still unrevealed great old ones tokens like those up there from the stage three will score double at the end of the game if they are remain unrevealed um, by the end by that point in time and then yeah this would then be pretty much points for the great old one so that's really where this game shines um, everyone has to do something about that first of all yeah you could gain a lot of points of course yeah it could turn sideways or against you but you could score some points against those great old ones um, but yeah you're also maybe you are in the lead and you want to make sure hey I'm I feel I'm doing okay right now. I might be able to win this game. So I have to make sure to take out some more of those bad guys here. So they're not scoring more points than we do. Because then again, they will automatically win that game. In respect to my points, there are a lot of ways to tweak that game. In respect to the difficulty. And that I like that a lot too. So I'm playing on the not easy level. I'm playing on the, I would call it difficult level. Which means I'm starting with three coal, three iron and four gold. And I'm also starting the game with four victory points in my hand. You will not see those tokens again. These are really only important for, I think, the cooperative version of the game and the competitive version of the game. So let's, because you can go after a very tough great old one uh, in a combined fashion and you can then share your points. Also something that I like a lot actually in this game. Um, but yeah, I will start the game with four victory points. I'm pretty sure that this is not enough. So I have also the chance to go for this solo victory um, point card for the end of the game. There, The game comes with eight or so, ten, I don't know. Um, you can draw one randomly, you can choose one. I really drew this one here randomly. And if I will be able to fulfill this at the end of the game, and this is sounds relatively straightforward here um, to have six gold in my warehouse at the end of the game I would score an additional 20 points for that so yeah I don't know how good or bad I will do I already set up the board because this really takes some time and this is what I came up with and this is also where the game extremely shines in respect to its replayability because you have those tokens here I keep forgetting what those are I think 
survey tiles, right? So those survey tiles here, you shuffle them, you put them on the board, you reveal them, and then they do something. Um, I don't know in respect to what where resources and where great old ones are getting placed. So again, replayability is nearly endless in this game, which I can typically love a lot in a game like this. Um, pretty much a Euro kind of sandbox. It's it's really a weird mix, but that's a Martin Wallace game. He always came up with very, very unique and clever games. And Australia is no difference here. Really like this one a lot. Yeah, we have here a very nice line of great old ones. These are still face down, unrevealed. Keep that in mind. And our job is pretty much to reveal them and ideally also fight them. So <laughs> definitely something... To think about because again at the end of the game every tile that is still unrevealed will get revealed and then um, the great old ones will score the victory points twice for each of those tiles. I have not removed any of those tiles so there are some ways to make this game even more difficult when you have some more experience so there are a lot of cute little kangaroos in that um, pile here. I'm pretty sure we might be able to see um, a kangaroo once or twice but there are still a lot of tokens left here and we gave them a big shuffle so not sure what will um, appear here. I decided to go with my port down here or with my harbor down here. Yeah, it could be kind of a risk because the great old ones will move down here. And when, when they will attack me successfully, so I will lose my harbor down there, the game is automatically over. I've not automatically lost the game, but the game will be over. And depending on how soon this happens, they will score a lot of points and then I'm pretty much out. That's the first time I'm playing this game solo. Uh, so I have no clue how I will do. Um, let's see about that. Could be a rather short playthrough. I don't know. But the reason I went down here is because here we have already a nice deposit of steel and phosphate. And phosphate is three victory points at the end of the game. And when you get it, you will also immediately score one gold. So I think getting here... With our first action, we could um, easily make it there. And I think that's pretty much it. So for the next, I don't know, couple of rounds, it will be exclusively my turn because I will take actions and depending on which actions, the time tracker moves ahead here. And as long as I'm behind the Cthulhu figure here, and typically you're using one of those tokens here, but the game comes with this awesome metal Cthulhu token here. So let me try to use that. So um, um, until I'm really behind here, I will get to take my action. As soon as I yeah, overtake Cthulhu, then they will also start taking action. Then things will really start to ramp up. So until then, things might be feel, I don't know, rather lame. Rest assured, this is truly needed. You have to prepare before the great old ones awake. So yeah, and that's now really on me making some um, informed decisions. Um, I have not played this game too many times, even in multiplayer, maybe five times or so. And unfortunately, it's already a while, I think half a year or so. So again, um, I may definitely not play that efficiently here. But yeah, again, <laughs> let's see how things go. But I'm really excited, really looking forward to this playthrough here. And I think with that being said, we will simply get started. Um, I think the very first thing that we have to do is indeed to lay track. And this is now kind of a bummer of my position, but I think I have to live with it anyway. So I think with my first action, I'm going for this one here. So I have to put in one of my, let's call it time stones, activation stones on that action. I can take those action multiple times. They're not necessarily blocking me, but if I want to go here again, I have to pay one piece of gold for each cube that's already on that space here. But anyway, um, with that being said, we are going to lay some track. I have to go down here to this area because this area tells me which areas I could lay track on. In this space down here, I can do that on hills. I can do that on the outback and coastal tiles, for example. This is unfortunately what I need because I will touch a coastal tile. I will catch a, a, um, touch a hill tile and I will also catch, I think again, it's an outback tile, if I remember that correctly, or space. So I have to go through all of those. If I would somehow have made a call to just move in here or move down here, then I would be okay with only two time units. But in this case, yeah, I still think it's worth it. So we have to pay the resources. That's one coal and one iron. This doesn't really matter if you're moving over hills or so. It's only the time 
that matters in this case. We are allowed to lay up to two tracks, but there is no reason not to build two tracks here. One and two. This simply goes back to the public reserve. And then now I have laid my first track. Of course, we still have to pay our time, which means one, two, three more time units here. Again, Cthulhu starts on 22. Um, it might sound like a very long time, but you see for these simple actions, we already have spent three of our time units. So yeah, we are definitely coming closer to that. Okay, it's still me because again, I'm still behind. So for my next action, I'm going to mine, which is this one up here. This costs me one time unit. I will mark that off camera here. So we are at four now. And now I'm allowed to mine all of the resources of one type in a hex, which I'm connected to and where there is no great old one. Great old ones are here next to us. So we are still okay. So in this case, I could definitely either go for the phosphate, which sounds intriguing because again, it comes with the gold and three victory points at the end of the game. And I believe that's what I should do. So we are doing this here. We are taking the phosphate. We don't do anything else with that other than again, grabbing the gold for that and the three points at the end of the game. So we already had seven points because of our starting bonus. Isn't that nice? Um, but that's again, all our actions or the action for this round. So the game is typically moving very, very fast unless you are fighting the great old ones later. But even that is a ton of fun. Okay, next action, we will mine again. Again, we are spending one time unit for that. We are now at five. And in this case, we are simply going for the three steel in our warehouse. We can um, sell the steel later on for some gold. And keep in mind, we want to have some gold in our warehouse at the end of the game for 20 points, which definitely is a big deal for sure. Um, but again, that was our action. And this is where really this solo game typically plays extremely um, smooth. If you know the game then and you know the game well, much better than I do, then we really move through that very, very quickly. Here again, I explain the rules. I explain everything as I as I go. So yeah, things will feel much slower than there really are. Also in a multiplayer game, this is not a long game, not an extremely long game that is. Next, we are going to recruit some help. So we are placing one of our cubes up there. This again costs us one time unit. So we are already up at six points. Yes, that's the case. And we will totally go for Lord Blackstock here. And we will play him right away. And he simply gives us four gold from the common supply. That's amazing course again for our special goal that's simply what we need everything else will slide here to the right because there are ways that um, some of those will get discarded the great old ones are typically doing this and we are revealing general takanashi who you can use once per battle to pretty much yeah you can sacrifice one of your military units to deal out two damage which is Definitely nice. This can be come. It can be a very crucial thing to do um, sooner or later. Let's not forget to grab our four gold. And again, we will also spend gold now to recruit some army or military units or buy military units. I think that's the proper action. And hmm, maybe that's what I'm going to do next. Yeah, I think. Because sooner or later we have to get after those tiles that are close to our harbor. So yeah, I think let's do that. So we could go for infantry, we could go for armored car, artillery, the airship and the armored train. Mm, depending on what you get, they come with a different price tag. The artillery costs us five gold. It's definitely amazing or a lot. The airship is four. Airship is very special, but also pretty cool. Has a range of four. Infantry only a range of one. Armored car, range of two. So definitely all interesting. But of course, we have to spend one time unit up there. So we are already at seven and we can buy one unit for this piece. The only exception are infantry units. So I could now spend up to two gold, which I will do to grab myself two of those infantry units. I don't know if they're still good enough to go for a fight. Maybe I will have to hire or buy new troops now with one. Ah, this feels a bit weak. It's not the amount 
of units don't get me wrong it's the diversity of units so we really want to go into the fight ideally with two or maybe even three different kind of units because it strongly depends who you are fighting so this is where we can look at this table down here you see here against the zombie infantry is good armored car is good train is poor artillery is poor against cthulhu yes you want to have a train or the artillery for example and here we have the airship so that's why you have to see and i don't know what i'm going to reveal i could now reveal a zombie again and these level one tiles are not cthulhu <laughs> That said me something. There is a table at the back of the rules where you can see the distribution of things, um, which are apparently I don't know really well. Um, but yeah, let's definitely be sure we are not encountering Cthulhu with our first tile here. But that's the reason why you want to have different kind of units in your expeditionary force later on if you are going to attack one of those tiles. I think next we are going to lay some more track. And this time I think we can go for this action up here. This again costs us one steel and one coal. Um, this is basically the player aid that shows this as a goal. This should be really silver. I'm not sure if this was my printer or if something wrong with the file. But again, it's a um, rectangular form here. So it's clearly a steel. So we have to pay that. We still have to spend two time unit so we are already at nine but the idea is to extend my network so i could make a case to go for this and this i cannot build on hill space because i only spent two um, time units here and didn't spend any gold to go to the other action again so i can only lay track either on those coastal areas or here in those outback tiles up there and again i could make a case for any of those but in this case let's do one here because this will unlock one of those farm tiles here and then maybe just move it further ahead into the outback yeah, let's do one more here i think that's okay because this is a very straight line and with most of my units i will be able to also attack adjacent tiles or adjacent to my track I think that's definitely that's okay i think that was an okay move and then with my next action i'm going to build a farm and we are going to build three farms and you always have to build three different farms so one corn one cow and one um, sheep here and you can only play those um, farms in their respective areas on the board, which is the reason why I did what I did there. I have to spend three time units because, again, I'm going to build three different farms. So we are moving one, two, three spaces further here, already at 12. But yeah, let's build the farms now. And also farms could really give us two victory points each if they are not destroyed. And then they will score for the great old one. So here or here we can build now a sheep farm. I think we are going to place one here. We are going to place one here. That's a cow cattle farm. And we are playing this corn farm down here in this area. That's totally legal. I was not allowed to build a farm here because there's already something on there. Um, I could not build a farm on a tile where there is a great old one. Makes sense. Of course, I have to be able to reach it through my rail network. I mean, it's a train game. It's Martin Wallace. Um, I'm really surprised that there aren't any depth mechanics in this game. But that's about it. Apart from that, it's really a very, let's call it, typical Martin Wallace game. And yeah, for every farm we have now built we will collect one gold and this could be six points but i really don't count on that those um, farms will be there until the end of the game at least not all of those but again three farms that's three pieces of gold i need the gold to recruit that's important but i also need the gold for my solo end game goal here having six gold in my warehouse at the end of the game really something i should not 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 forget then I guess we are going to, yeah, I think we have to. Um, I could reset. Hmm. I could now take this action for one time to get all of my stones back. On the other hand, I really do have gold. Uh, let's not do that just yet. No. So we are placing another cube in here because there was already a cube. We have to spend one gold for that. Um, we are again recruiting. This costs us one time. So we are at 13. And I guess this time we will go for the armored car here. So we are spending one, two, three gold. And this gives us one of those 
armored cars. I think that's definitely worth it. Again, this was my action. And then we might want to attack, actually. Yeah, let's totally do that. So we are placing a cube here. And now, depending on the different amount of, let's say, army types we are sending to our expeditionary force. And in this case, yes, we are definitely both of those, my both two infantry units and my armor cord. So minimum time cost is always a one. And then for each other um, we are going to send, we have to basically spend one more time unit for that. And we don't have to spend that exactly, no additional time points um, for moving airships and armored trains. But in this case, yeah, those two will cost us two time points, which moves up, up to 15. And then I have to make a call which one of those. Again, I can reach them all pretty much, so they're adjacent to my rail line here. And I guess right now there's no reason not to simply go for the first one here. So let's reveal it. So we are attacking this one here and bam, it's a kangaroo. I spent two time points for nothing. Let's zoom in a little bit to have a nice look at this nice looking kangaroo. This tile is simply out of the game. Nothing has happened, but that's okay. I take that. That's something you have to uh, get rid of those tiles. Of course, if you are at the end of the game revealing tiles and they chose a kangaroo, kangaroo doesn't have any victory points, so it will not score for the great, great old ones either. As we are already hmm, not really out of gold, but we are down to six, which is again the minimum for my end game victory point card. I'm not going to spend any more gold, at least at this point in time. We have to do that sooner or later, so I'm pretty sure I will not be able to keep here at six all the time. At some point in time, we have to take that risk. But I think we are going for this action here, which for one time unit, so we are at 16, we are getting all of those cubes back. And then we are simply going into our next turn. It's still our turn as we are still a couple of spaces below the value of Cthulhu here. But yeah, sooner or later, they will start to activate too. Oof. With our first action after re the reset, I think we are going for another personality card. This costs us yet again another time unit. So we are at 17 and here I'm really tempted to go for Timothy Brassy here. And he allows us once per game pretty much and we don't have to do that right now to play two track without paying the time. But of course we still have to pay the coal and the steel for that. So I guess that's really something to consider. Again, time is critical especially in the solo game i feel and not spending three time or two time could be extremely valuable i have already moved everything to the right let's reveal our next card alanza castro okay if a great old one is attacking one of your farms oh he gets two damage oh that's an amazing card two damage right off the bat and that's an ongoing effect i like her a lot wow 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 of course, I could immediately go for Alanza Castro, but this would cost me a gold. So and I think we don't have a rush there because she's all the way to the left. And if this one revelation card comes up, this revelation card re uh, removes the right, uh, rightmost two. So I think I have time with Alanza, but I want her. That's for sure. I need her in my ranks. So are we going to maybe get more or are we, should we simply attack again? Yeah, let's attack again rather. Let's do that. So we are spending one of our cubes here. Again, we are going to send out two different kind of troops, which costs us one, two time units here. And in this case, I guess we are going for this one because this would open up the path towards this gold deposit here. And again, these things have been randomly seeded with those survey tiles. So they could show up pretty much anywhere. There's are only restrictions in respect to where great old ones would appear. And that can be only on those yeah, outback tiles here. Mm, yeah, let's go for this one. So we're revealing it. So we're attacking it and bam, <laughs> it's another kangaroo. Hmm. I know, folks, it's kind of boring, but I will go for it anyway. That's okay. This is not 
any more danger of course this one most likely is one and again if this great old one moves onto this farm this farm is immediately gone for good that could cost us it's basically a three point swing because we are not scoring it the great old ones will score it for one we would get two points they would get one point so yeah oof, keeping those farms alive is not a bad idea hmm I could now make a case for using Timothy Brassey here. Yeah, let's use him right now. So he's now out of the game. Again, we still have to pay the coal and the steel or iron. We have one more, uh, one coal, that's all, it's gone. So we might have to consider doing that too. We don't have to spend any time units for that. But where am I going to lay my track? Uh, again, coal is really far away in this map. That's definitely a problem. So I think we are going in that direction. I could make a case to go in that direction too. But I think, no, let's let's keep it simple. Of course, yeah, if I would use a green one now, um, this would be beneficial for me because then I would maximize the card here. But I think in this case, that's our better bet because we will also stay very close to those um, great old ones. If I would move in here, we would not so easily be able to attack this great old one here. And here is this great old one is protecting three coal but it's a level two so yeah <laughs> you never know what's below these so far it were only kangaroos but this will change relatively soon too then yeah this was not really our action we simply played that card um, you do that typically when it's your turn and then what are we going to simply grab that gold right now until it's there yeah why not the resources typically don't simply vanish but if they're whatever if a great old ones moves on there later on for example then as long as it's there we cannot mine it so yeah let's totally grab that three gold from the space we just connected to so we are at nine if i counted that correctly so that's well, i think that's pretty cool actually and with three i could consider going for another unit maybe maybe add another one here and this would give me an artillery and then i'm really strong against at least the most of those great old ones there or should i make sure to get some more coal ah, there are so many tiles oh it's so so bad so many decisions ah yeah let's let's go for one more unit time so we are spending one more time so we are already at 20 we are going to spend five of our gold so we are down to four but yeah i think we should get there one way or the other and yeah with that we are going for one of those artillery units of course again every unit you are bringing to the battle or rather type of unit that you're bringing to the battle will increase the in increase the time you have to spend and again even if this would have been four infantry units i could bring them all for just one time unit here that's important okay in theory we still have basically two more time units before Cthulhu would activate and in this case I will, would move let's say I would spend two time units I would be considered on top of Cthulhu and then it's still my turn so the player who is on top is considered to be the active player but of course if I now spend three time units with one action then Cthulhu would totally activate twice because again they would activate here and then they would be on top of me and then they would activate again so yeah what am i going we have to spend those two time units wisely now so maybe we just want to attack it costs us one gold but i think that's still okay i think that is still okay so we are placing one here because again there is a cube we have to spend one gold we should be able to get some more Gold. but we have to be careful we really oh i have to be careful in this case i'm only sending two different units so it's two i guess so that's two time units we are now basically on top of cthulhu so even after our action we will go again at least once more and as i want to protect this farm here we are going to attack this great old one here and okay i think that's uh, is this amigo i believe 
So it can take two points worth of damage, which will bring us one victory point. Not great, but again, if we wouldn't have defeated it at the end of the game, it would score two points for Cthulhu. So definitely worth considering. So yeah, but we have now decided to attack that Migo, and the attack in this game is also, or the combat system in this game is also simply amazing. I really like this a lot. So let's bring out our military units here. So we have brought the infantry, we have brought the armored car. So those guys now are attacking um, the Migo here. And with our first action, we are simply drawing our first, I think these are called simply Cthulhu card. And these are pretty much the dice, the randomizer for this game. First of all, we are checking where the thing is. So here we are. Hmm, that's bad. So this tells us um, what we are doing for the Migo. Um, if we would have an airship with us, it would inflict one piece of damage. We don't have an airship with us, so yeah, we have basically whiffed. Problem is, on the right-hand side, we have now taken one piece of damage, which we can assign freely to our units. And in this case, yeah, absolutely, we will go for one of those infantry units. Now I get to, cho get to choose if I want to retreat or not. I think it's still relatively premature to do that so we are simply going into the next round of combat we are revealing another car so we are checking it here again and again the armor train would um, basically do some damage we don't have an armor train with us the Migo will cost us one loss of sanity and yes of course it's an HP Lovecraft themed game to some extent so it comes with uh, mental health we have three of those one of those is now being expended and if we lose all of those and would have to lose again then we would uh, immediately lose that battle we will not lose the game but the battle will be lost so let's keep going for sure and again we are checking the Migo that's perfect Perfect. Okay, our infantry units, and again, no matter how many infantry units we brought, um, they will simply do one piece of damage. Amazing. So we'll take one of our cubes, placing it here. This could matter um, in case we would lose the, the battle, for example, and then the damage will remain on those things and could also score your partial victory points. Of course, that's not going to happen in a solo game. Um, they would hit the airship, but yeah, we don't have an airship with us. Perfect. So let's go into the next round of combat. And okay, that's a total whiff on both sides. So we could simply keep going. And here we have the armored car. The armored car does one point of damage. Amazing. That's all we need. We are losing one more mental health, but we still have one more to go. So nothing has happened here to us. Amazing. We have taken care of this Migo. We will put it into or next to our victory point pile here. The damage now is fully healed because we have won that battle. So our expeditionary forces simply go back to there um, our HQ and then the battle is over and yeah these cars simply get back to the discard pile and then yeah um, we might see them again at a later point in time. Cool! So I was able to show you a uh, combat in this um, first episode of my playthrough. I think we will still keep going for one or two more rounds. I also want to show you how Cthulhu or the Great Old Ones will activate but it's still our turn so in theory we could simply take a prep turn to say we are going to reset and we get all those cubes back and we can use those cubes uh, or those spaces later on without spending any more gold and honestly i think that may not be our worst idea yeah we will go for a reset which means we are now at 23 time units so we will reset everything and now, for the first time in this game, Cthulhu is behind and will spend his very first time points here. We are moving on to a lighter shaded um, space here, which means we are also dealing with a revelation card in this round. So let's draw that one accordingly. They come in three stages, one, two and three. And they are... All those piles come with a multitude of cards. You shuffle them and five of those will be part of each of the games of so five ones, five twos and five threes in this case. So this will be our first level one card. And this one says it's typically always the same thing or at least in a lot of these instances, we are now revealing the great old ones in the space with the lowest number. So let's do that. 
So all of those spaces have little numbers down here. So there are nine, four, and I think in this case, it should be the 11, which is the lowest number. Yes, we are revealing this level two one. And wow, that's a tough one. That's a Shogoth. Are you kidding me? That's a rather nasty one right off the bat. He can take six points of damage, but will also ward us with six victory points. Wow, that is insane. And again, this Shogoth is now revealed, which means if we are not defeating him until the end of the game, it's worth six points. So if this would have been revealed, this would have, or unrevealed, this would have been 12 points. So even that already reduced the amount for the Great Old or the victory points amount for the Great Old Ones by six. So definitely worth it oh boy okay next we are going to activate if there are revealed um great old one tiles on the board unless it's a temple temples are not moving obviously and check if they're moving we are now drawing two of those uh, cthulhu cards again and then we will check um, if they would move so we are looking at the circled ones here in this case the madman or the cultist i think whatever would move and cthulhu himself would move so we don't have a shogoth in a light one so we can simply discard this card that is a good start i take that but we are doing another card and again the shogoth is not going to move nearly everyone else would move. everyone else would move of course again the temple doesn't but wow that in this case oof, that was kind of lucky they're not only moving one space but they would typically always move towards our the closest farm or the port in this case and this is more mm, interesting when playing multiplayer because then you also have this dimension of tactics in the game where you are placing your farms depending on the position of those great old ones because you can see okay if i place the farm here this great old one might move closer to me if i place it there maybe my left neighbor will get harassed by the sugars for example again a lot of interesting decisions in this game um the thing is cthulhu is yeah activating again because the figure is still on top of us so we are moving it here to the 24 and this will now really go back and forth depending on which actions i'm going to take maybe they will take three turns in a row for example or four turns in a row it's really a little bit up to me so we are not um playing another revelation card because that's a dark bordered or dark background space but we are still checking for the movement okay in this case the shogos will move and again it will always move closer to something it can destroy so in this case it would be either here or there because that's two spaces away from our farm um, therefore we have this nice little token here because the card says it moves counterclockwise towards the five so in this case, um, uh, this is where I'm really stuck at. I think it would move here, but it can move there because it has to move there. So we are moving here. Um, no, it moves counterclockwise, right? So it, yeah, I think in this case, this one will move down here. If I mess this one up, um, please let me know. I will try to repair that, but I think that's how it works. In this case, again, it's moving closer to our farm anyway. So I think it doesn't really matter too much if it's moving here or there, at least I think at this point in time. But that was only the first card we will activate again. And whew, again, we were lucky the Shogos is not going to activate. Okay, we have to do something about that now. Hmm, but what am we what am I going to do about that? Oh, that's a rather nasty one. And I think with that cliffhanger kind of a situation here, I will end my very first episode of my playthrough of Australia. I'm pretty sure that this will be not an endless playthrough, so I might consider doing maybe one more episode or maybe two. Really depends now a little bit on how long those battles will take me. I really hope you enjoyed it so far. Again, send in your suggestions, recommendations on how to play this game much better than I do. I would really appreciate it. Also, let me know if I goofed something up, especially in respect to this movement. For those AI things, I'm really, really poor. I don't know what's going on there, but I typically fail to um, play those correctly. But in this case, I felt rather <laughs> comfortable. But yeah let me know if i mess this one up and i will repair those easily because i can still then move the great old one or the shogoth into that space easily huge shout out to all of my patrons out there really do appreciate all your support um you can 
support me on Patreon, you will find a link in my on my in the description of this video here. You can join me here directly on YouTube. Like and subscribe. This also greatly helps. And yeah, really hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.